loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be talking about some books that I loved that aren't fantasy. If you've been on my channel at all then you'll probably realise that I predominantly read fantasy. It's the genre that dominates my favourite shelf, it's just what I love. But I do read outside of fantasy sometimes and there are some books that I love that aren't fantasy so I thought we would chat about them today. I can't remember if I've done a video like this before. If so, then I've probably already talked about these books before. I haven't talked about some of them in quite a while so I just thought I would bring them back up and have a chat about them. So the first one I have, I have mentioned recently. <laughs> Because this one is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. This one is a sci-fi and I just adore it. This book initially follows a young girl who falls into this like huge pit when she's younger, she's riding a bike and just like she's gone, she's gone into it. And when people come to rescue her, they discover that she's actually just like stood in the middle of a giant metal hand. So they excavate it, they get it out and they start doing research on how on earth this giant metal hand just ended up in the ground. And it just so happens that when this young girl grows up, she ends up becoming one of the scientists that's working on the investigation into this. I read this entire series within like two or three days, which never happens for me. I am so bad at continuing series, it's actually ridiculous. I can leave a sequel years and years and years to read, so for me to read a trilogy within a few days just baffled me, but that's how much I loved it. It was so addictive, especially because the format of these books, the story is told through interviews and case files. So not only is it quicker to read because of the formatting, but it just made it so addictive because you were finding little pockets of information on every single page. And like I said, it was building up a case file of sorts in which there was a mystery that you were piecing together bit by bit. And it was just so page turning. I love the characters in it so, so much, which really surprised me actually, because with it being told through an interview format, I didn't know if there would be a level of disconnect there because you're not seeing like inside their thoughts or you don't have this kind of third person narration to tell you what they're thinking and stuff, it's just dialogue. It worked really really well especially for the story specifically because it did also feel like a scientific report and like you were part of this bigger project that was going on and then what that project actually turns into is just mind-blowing and so incredible to read. I just adored this book, this series, everything about it. And that's coming from somebody who hasn't read a lot of sci-fi. I really do want to get into the genre but I'm still very hit or miss with it but this one was a massive hit for me and I would highly recommend it to anybody who wants to give sci-fi a go because it got me hooked, that's for sure. Next up we have a non-fiction which I used to love non-fiction books. I have been in a slump with non-fiction for about two years now but I am hoping to get back into it. But one that I adored when I read it is The Ancient Guide to Modern Life by Natalie Haynes. Now you might actually recognise this author name if you like Greek myth retellings at all because she has written two Greek myth retellings which are A Thousand Ships and The Children of Jocasta. But like I said this one is a non-fiction but it is still based on ancient history so we're not going too far away from the general topic that she writes about but I really like this one. One because it's not too long for what would be considered a historical non-fiction but this book basically takes ancient history and shows you how things from that long ago still inspire things that happen to this day. Even down to like the soap operas that are on TV, what things were named after, what things were inspired by and it's just fascinating to me. Natalie Haynes also has a really accessible way of writing. She's not one of the classicists which make things unreasonably difficult to read and understand. You can go into this knowing absolutely nothing and be completely fine because that's what I did. <laughs> it's also entertaining in the sense that she chooses out things that would generally interest people of this modern era so she doesn't talk about like it's not the sort of book which deep dives into the etymology of a specific random word it's more that she will take things that are within pop culture or things that we will at least have heard of and show you where that came from and it is just fascinating I really enjoyed it so if you do have any vague interest in ancient history then I would highly recommend this one. Next up is one which I have loved for years and years and years I don't know how much I would love it now if I read it but when I was younger I did read this book three times and loved it every single time when I was younger I did read this book three times, one of which I read in a day. And this one is The Dead House by Dawn Kurtigich. So this one is a horror, basically, which I have read so few horror books that it's ridiculous and I have nothing to compare it to. But the reason why I tried this one is because 
we have multimedia formatting. So there is a whole host of different things in here because this book is basically presented as a case file. If you couldn't tell, I do like case file situations, multimedia formatting. With this one, the story is that there was a school that burned down and some students died within the fire. They don't know whether it was an accident or somebody set fire to the school on purpose. And that happened 25 years ago. However, they have now found more information and so the case has been reopened and this is what this case file is because they find a diary of one of the students who were there. This is very much the sort of horror in which you kind of have to decide for yourself what story you believe because not only do you have horror in the sense of like supernatural stuff going on but you also have horror in the sense of psychological horror and you know a spiraling of mentality which is just fascinating to me and I still to this day can't decide which story I would rather believe. <laughs> All the way through you have like random pages of newspaper articles, you have pages of a diary and you can see like the spiralling of everything going on the more you get into the book because not only do you actually see the words that are written apparently in a diary entry but it's almost as if the pages just start degrading more and more and things just become more messy and it really does just put you in the story because you can quite literally see the mindsets of the people involved. It also does a really good job at feeding you information at the right time. So I found that sometimes, I mean, I haven't read too many mystery type books, but I found that sometimes information is withheld for a bit too long and you start getting bored because you're not getting any answers. Or sometimes you are just handed answers too quickly. And so there's nothing really engaging about it because you kind of know where it's going already. This one really does like drip feed information as and when you need it and if you think the story is going one way it will suddenly like turn it another way. I just love this book, it's really quick paced and yeah as I said I wouldn't know how much I would love it if I read it now but definitely as a young adult myself I loved it. And I do actually have Dawn Kurtzkish's other books, I've read one of them and there's one which I haven't read yet but I am definitely intrigued to see if I like those ones just as much. I've just realised that all of these books besides the non-fiction have some kind of mystery theme to it so maybe I should lean into that some more when I'm choosing books that aren't fantasy. Revelations all around, hey? <laughs> So the next book is The Shadow of the Wind by Colosh Ruiz Afon. This one has been one of my favourite books for years and years and years now. I haven't continued the series yet, but that's on me. And that's largely because I didn't even realise it was a series for like a couple of years or so. But this one is set in 1940 Spain and is a mystery type book. Like I always find this one really hard to fit into a genre because it is just kind of a historical mystery but at the start of this book we follow Daniel whose father takes him to the library of forgotten books. This is a library for books which are almost extinct so you can quite often find the last copy of a book that exists. They're the sort of books which are out of print and you find it harder and harder to find them. So there is this library of forgotten books in which they're all sent there and given safekeeping basically. Now in the beginning of this book Daniel's father takes him to the library forgotten books and tells him that he can choose one out and that once he does so it's his responsibility to keep the book's memory alive so so that there will be at least one person who remembers its story. Now that all sounds very whimsical but it actually takes a really dark turn because when Daniel reads the book he actually does end up falling in love with it which pretty lucky considering he just chose it at random. He starts researching into the author and as he does so he comes across this mystery in which somebody is just burning all of this author's works. They are on a vendetta against this author, they don't want anything that they've ever written to exist. And so he ends up delving into this mystery of finding out what on earth happened, why this is happening, if he can stop it from happening and it's just so good. It's so good. It's a strange one because even though I've just explained to you the synopsis, it also doesn't feel like that kind of story at all. This definitely pulls off the dark atmosphere perfectly. It also kind of has dark academia vibes in there without being straight up dark academia aesthetics I guess, like we're not in a university or anything, but in terms of like art being appreciated and this really like underlying dark horror going on behind everything, I don't know, it's really difficult to describe, but it is just one of those books where you don't really realise how much you fall into it until you get a good few hundred pages in and you're just like, I need to know what happens. I have read this book multiple times now and loved it every single time. I should probably do a reread and actually continue with the series, but I don't know, I almost don't want to continue with the series at this point because I'm like, this one book is just so good that I don't want more of a story, I just want this story to exist. But the series, at least the next book, I think follows different characters or like jumps in time somewhere. And then I think the third book jumps back to these characters I don't know, it's a bit of a weird like hopscotch type series but you have a mystery that's revolving around a love of books and an author and it's just mm, so good, so good. 
And then finally is one which, if you've been around a little while, you might actually know this one. We have The Furies by Katie Lowe. This one is Dark Academia, a mystery thriller type situation. On the back it just says Obsession, Witchcraft, Murder. <laughs> This one is set in 1998 in which a 16 year old girl is found dead on a swing. All it says in the synopsis is that this mystery of what happened was never solved. Four girls knew what happened. They've never told anybody until now. So straight away you know that we're dealing with a murder and this actually jumps back in time. So we know that somebody died. We don't know who it is but we know that a girl died, was found in this really like creepy situation and then we jump back in time and see a build-up of events based around this group of girls who were involved. And I found it really haunting almost because you know that something bad is going to happen. You don't know which one it's going to happen to. You don't know how it can spiral to end up in such a dire situation. But you also get the creeping sense of something's wrong here right from the beginning. Even if like everything seems fine. And then when you do start spiraling into everything that's going wrong, it's just like, oh no. <laughs> It's so hard not to spiral with it. I read this one in 24 hours because I was just so invested in finding out what happened. And like I said, we do have the Dark Academia vibes because it's called the Furies, which is from Greek myth. We also have these girls being within art classes and basing things off Greek mythology and stuff like that. And I just absolutely loved it. This was one of those books that I loved for the Dark Academia aesthetic before I even knew the Dark Academia aesthetic. So now that I've come to know what that is and also see how that so inherently links in with a mystery side of things. I can now explain why I liked it so much. So I love this one. I know that not everybody loves it, but we have hints of witchcraft and girls being obsessive over ancient history and a murder mystery. So I'm content with that. <laughs> so yes, these are a few books that I loved which aren't fantasy. As I said, we've now had a revelation that I apparently like mystery thriller type situations. So gonna be keeping an eye out for those more often. As always, do let me know if you've read any of the books I've just mentioned and what your thoughts on them were if you have. And also let me know if you have any recommendations based on what I've just given because if I can find books that are similar, I would love that. But for now, I will just finish up this video here. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.